Cyberfest 2021 Cyberfest Rebooted Thinking Captions. I'm going to be the host. Uh, my name is Avi, and our wonderful guest of honor is Tiny Splendor. Um, we are so grateful to have you guys here. Thank you for um, sharing yourself with us. Um, quickly, just going to go over some house rules and order of events. Um, so first off, we'll just go over a few um, house rules and expectations. San Francisco Zine Fest, it, it, founded in 2001, is a gathering place for writers and artists from around the world, but especially the Bay Area. Typically held as a one-day event at the County Fair Building in the Golden Park, our 2019 festival had about 240 exhibitors and over 5,000 attendees. Due to COVID-19, our 2020 festival spanned three weeks and encompassed over 21 days of zine-related zine activities and was 100% virtual. San Francisco Zine Fest 2021 is a nine-day mostly virtual fest with in-person workshops and collaborations with local um, and Bay Area bookstores. What is Cyberfest Rebooted? It is, like I said, eight and a half, nine days, August 28th through September 5th. It has exhibitor show and tells, readings, workshops, demos, interviews, and again, our guest of honor, Tiny Splendor. Quickly want to go over um, our safe spaces policy. Uh, we are committed to providing a harassment-free experience for everyone, regardless of gender, gender identity, expression, sexual orientation, disability, physical appearance, body size, race, or religion. We will not tolerate harassment at SF Zine Fest events in any form. Individuals violating the safer space policy may be sanctioned or expelled from the space or the event at the discretion of any SF Zine Fest organizer. Um, but most of all, respect uh, other people, respect people's opinions, beliefs, different states of being and different points of view. Always get explicit verbal consent before taking someone's photo or crossing other personal boundaries, which in our case uh, includes screenshots, reposting screenshots to social media. Um, please get uh, a consent. Uh, be responsible for your actions and aware that they may have an effect on others, regardless of your original intent. And a safe and respectful community is everyone's responsibility. And I uh, granted that everyone will be mindful of that. Um, guidelines for Zoom, please keep your video off unless you're presenting. Uh, this will help prevent lagging. Keep yourself on mute unless you're presenting. Uh, for presenters, if you have a question, you can ask that in the chat. Uh, there are chat moderators in not only the panel, but Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, chat will be available for you at all times. Attendees may ask questions uh, in the Q&A feature. And artists have five minutes to share their work, and they can use that five minutes however they like. Please go ahead and compliment each other or just say hi if you'd like. Uh, ASL interpretation um, is provided by Pro Bono. Uh, please be mindful for folks who are blind uh, or virtually uh, visually impaired. Uh, be a little more descriptive than you normally would. Hold the, the images from your zine or comics up to the camera for those who uh, you know want to see, uh, but may not be, like I said, uh, quite able. Uh, the Zoom webinar is being recorded. Uh, be mindful of that the broadcast uh, we will broadcast on Facebook and to YouTube. Uh, above all, please be respectful. Um, should I say when presenting? Tell us your name, your pronouns. Are you based in the Bay Area? Where are you now? And tell us a little bit about yourself. Show us your work or read something from your zines. And please, uh, again, be as descriptive as possible. Again, my name is Avi Jetter. I'm an organizer for San Francisco Zine, Fe Zine Fest. I won't spend a lot of time talking about myself. I do self-publish, uh, draw, and write a horror comic. Nothing good ever happens at 4 a.m. Uh, again, I'm a huge horror gore movie fan. I like classic movies, B-movies, sci-fi. Uh, I just began recently drawing perzines uh, from topics ranging from personal health to politics and social commentary. 
Uh, again, I organize, help organize San Francisco Zine Fest and Oakland Creates. You can find me on Instagram at nothing good at the number four. Um, you can also find me on YouTube under nothing good ever happens at four. And I'm going to go ahead and jump right in to our sorry, jump right into our guest of honor. And I'm so excited to find out a little bit more about you guys. Um, they typically uh, print uh, all our posters and whatnot. So Tiny Splendor uh, says we started in 2012 as a tiny collective traveling around sharing our friends' artwork and our work out of a small wooden fold-up gallery. We've since grown into two separate studios, one in Berkeley and one in Los Angeles, providing print and publishing services to artists locally and from around the world. We continue to pursue self-publishing and love of ink on paper, producing print editions, zines, books, apparel, and more. Our Los Angeles studio is run by Cynthia T. Navarro. Our Berkeley studio, also called Max's Garage Press, is run by Max Stadnick and Sh Shania Khan. And I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your name. We will start off with the individual presentations. We'll start with Ocean Escalante. And she says, and I'm sorry if she or they say, Ocean Escalante is an indigenous artist residing in Oakland, California, with a focus in printmaking and fiber arts. She has a passion for the narrative with inspiration from the human nature symbiosis, locally forage and plants for natural dying. Ocean spends her time showing and reading from her self-published works of poetry, comics, illustrations at events in the Bay Area. And I'm going to pass it on to you, Ocean, and welcome, and thank you so much. All righty, yes. So I'm going to share my screen here for a second. And here we go. So yes, here I am pictured at the 2018 Good Omen. It's a craft market um, brought on by our friend Angelica and a couple other of her friends. This is usually what my setup looks like. This is a lot of older work. Um, and then here I am at Max's Garage Press printing some litho. Uh, this print's gonna come up later. So kind of remember that little format. Um, so just as a way to start, um, I was able to have like an institutional background I got my bachelor's in fine arts in printmaking at San Francisco Art Institute. I graduated in 2016. In 2015, these were the first two zines that I have ever made. One of them is called Just Like Animals. The other one is called Ain't Nobody's Dirty Business, a sketchbook or diary, who knows? Um, and so these are some spreads from Just Like Animals. In college, I think, like a lot of us, I was really concerned with like social, political um, ideas and also just how like race and indigenous and black displacement comes into place. On the right hand side here, we have single alphabetical letters in sign language and it says dominate to be great. So a little tongue in cheek there. Um, and then this next spread is two women and behind them is like a photo of a sweatshop. So my ideas back then were very punk, very DIY. I did this uh, Xerox on the college Xerox machine in our library. Um, I was thinking a lot about climate change, a lot of issues that we still see today, but um, as far as like layout and finessing, like my work wasn't really there yet. So we fast forward a little bit. I am now in my last year. I'm thinking a lot about identity. Uh, this is in 2016. I made this small digital printed zine called How to Be a Modern American. Here's me on the left-hand side here, illustrated smoking with me and my little dog. Um, and this one is more of the same. So it's kind of like crass, it's very bold in terms of idea situated around how people see indigenous 
um, others in how uh, we're often portrayed as like the mystical Indian, uh, the tobacco token kind of statue. And on the other hand, we are perceived as like savage and something that is other and something that is not rooted in like normal human portrayal. So this is me reclaiming that iconography and trying to twist it around and play off of it. Um, a little bit later that year, I ended up taking a bookmaking class. I was able to have a mentor. I got an honor studio and I really saw my form kind of become what it is now. So here is like a screen print on chipboard. You have this like female figure in the middle and you have these two dark ominous figures on the side. Inside of that format was a letter pressed accordion fold and kind of dealing with the same tropes of Native Americanism, like uh, having that like alcoholic susceptible to like substance abuse background. Um, dogs are very prevalent in my work. They are a lot of the imagery that I still continue to play with. I do believe in like companionship with animals that we do hold space in this world as humans with nature and also animals as well. Um, and I took a long break from zine making. I did not make a zine for a few years after. And that is where I kind of went back to that Xerox sort of punk aesthetic. So here we have this zine called Sanctuary. It is short comics and illustration. All of these were drawn in 2017 and I printed it in 2018. And I did my second edition this year. So we have a spread from Sanctuary. And it reads, um, it's just two people have a coming having a conversation. One of them is a little bit heated. The other one's a little bit more apathetic. So you have someone here being like, you know, like, when did basic human knowledge become DIY? And the other one just kind of puffs that thought away and says, so what? So this theme was a very big part of my work back then. Um, I didn't really understand the disconnect between um, like the DIY culture becoming like really popular again, like where did we lose that connection with doing stuff for ourselves? I feel like it's very obvious for people who are artists, those that craft, but why is it so exciting? Like we should have more of that, right? <laughs> so this is a second little spread from Sanctuary. Um, it's just a comic about me, like walking through the East Bay, it be being a rainy day. I have owned a car in the Bay. I have been a pedestrian. I ride public transportation, but there's nothing like transporting myself on foot that gets a lot of my ideas flowing. And also in 2018, I really started to enjoy collaborations. This is a dog worship zine drawn with my friend Jeremy and Nathan. I really started to enjoy uh, the act of creating together, um, being able to draw on something and pass it off to another friend and having it uh, change or stay the same and just playing with format. This is the second spread from that zine. It says, pet a dog and enjoy, a note from the artist. Thank you for your interest in dog drawings. This one is for the Poochies, adopt, get a fuzzy friend. So also in 2018, some friends of mine started this comics collective called Freak Comics and they do anthologies almost every year or biannually. This was my comic for that one. And I used to have this ongoing series called Before the Buildings. It was uh, basically just like an indigenous protagonist in time before cities were made and they experienced like um, bouts of like mysticism. So this one reads, deep within trance, a heart filled with gold, pour out your sin, reverse how we're old, how did our hero end up here? So here we have the protagonist searching for food, they find the food, they get um, kind of caught up in between these two witches looking for some sort of blood. You can see here that they have the protagonist, they put the blood on a crystal and the crystal breaks. So they're like, who is this being? Divine, no, no, too fleshy, evil. And the other one says, you think, 
And then they say, either way, clearly not the blood we need. So sister, we must continue on. And here you have our protagonists wake up from their mystical dream state, acknowledge the fact that they did see a fruit tree there, but it is gone and they crunch into the fruit as if nothing happened. Um, so 2018 is when I got my stride in just creating. Um, in 2019, I was able to be the recipient of the Fall 2019 RHO Memorial Fund that Rock, Paper, Scissors puts on. And I think I had gotten like a hundred dollar stipend to create a zine. And before this, I didn't have so much money to put into a project. So I was able to include illustrations, poetry, and other artwork. And at that time, I also became a monitor at the press and I got trained to use the risograph. So here are some spreads. This is a photo from Mountain View Cemetery in Oakland, California. On the right side here, I had scanned in a lino cut with these like three indigenous women like sitting by a river and there's a funeral pyre in the background. Then here we have a photo of San Francisco, the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, sorry, off in the distance, a weird little like heart-shaped steak that they sell on Valentine's Day, really strange. Um, and then on the left side here, you have somebody cracking an egg on their head. Um, and then I actually have a poem that I would like to read from that zine. Um, it's called Little Ones, and here it is. Uh, Nothing is better than listening to Sun Ra in Oakland, California. Bookmark my life with a Safeway receipt, splitting hairs up the mountain, all this decay, hefty stems stumble around, $10 bootleg in the parking lot. It is funny, isn't it? My incandescent anger, dripping with frustration, large lady layout, mother mile, hideaway in me. So the middle poster is actually the litho that I printed in the first two slides, but now I digitized it and printed it on the risograph to include in that zine. So uh, later on in 2019, I became really interested in compiling like all women artists to um, provide poetry for this anthology. It is now on its second issue. This is the first one called Full Moon Meltdown. This is the center spread. Um, a really talented writer named Maddie Dechter provided poetry for this spread. And then I also draw a lot of influence from music. Um, here we have three fanzines. The one on the top is I Miss Daniel Johnston. The one on the bottom is a collaborative zine between me and my partner, and it's called We Miss Jerry Garcia. And the one on the bottom right is I Miss David Bowie. Here are other front spreads of all of those. And yeah, I think uh, music is very important for my work. If anything, it is through like punk alternative music that kind of introduced me to subcultures and made zine making even more important to my practice. Um, here we have another single fold zine. This time it's 11 by 14, it's two colors. Um, and the middle spread is a heat wave referencing um, a very awful heat wave we had in 2019 and I made a lot of work about it and I talked about it a lot <laughs> in my work that year. Um, so yeah, towards the fall I was able to make a large book with my friends who run a publishing house. Um, this one's called Sunspot Storm. It was a compilation of selected drawings it uh, screen printed on chipboard for the covers. The inside is risograph. Uh, here is one page from there. So I like to work with these like large tableau kind of like cartoony style illustrations. A lot of it references the fact that I live by a freeway. There's always a freeway and some sort of cars um, continuing this kind of dog theme. And then this like matriarchal like women who live in my mind. Um, so yes, in 2020, I didn't make that much work. I think we were all pretty concerned with other things. Um, I did, however, make this one zine called Fire Air, and that's referencing uh, the time where we had all the orange days because the fire air weather had like blocked out the sun. 
Um, so that gave me the, um, yeah, it gave me the inspiration to just print a zine that was orange, red, and black. And here are a few spreads from that. I like to add some found photography and some other drawings. Here's the middle spread. Um, I look towards a lot of alchemical imagery. I'm obsessed with mysticism. I think this quote is like very in line with like Eastern meditation and like Buddhism ideations. Here's another spread. And this is my second um, all women's poetry zine, this time called Vinegar Mothers. I usually like to play with form and add a little poster there. Here's the spread with all of the writers. A lot of them came back for the second time. Here is the middle spread uh, with poetry from my friend Taylor Kodiker. She's a beautiful uh, jeweler and she also writes work. Here is my spread. And then, yeah, uh, also in 2021, I was able to uh, be included in this collaborative zine uh, from the artist Alicia McCarthy. It is available for download on SF Mama's page still. So this is my poem that I included in there. It is called West Oakland Rainbow. And it goes, spring, I'm excited for Exalus flowers, lined in row like paveway peacemakers. The Bart, she screams baybound, plunging into abalone shell shock, that rumble under your toes filling, shiny metal mentality. Sea salt air, I see you feeding, hummingbird highway. Save some for me so that we, we might delight in a filling of a Sunday sidewalk sale. Morning dew dollars, we beckon you to chime in. So yeah, this is kind of um, just a small pocket poetry zine that I had printed. A lot of it is very personal. Um, it is available for sale. And then yeah, a little pre-sale sneak peek. Uh, this is a cryptid California zine made by me and my friend, Alexandra Montclair. We are obsessed with like X-Files, anything uh, scary. Um, so this is really about like all the weird little Sasquatch Loch Ness monsters lurking in the backwoods of California. And here is the spread here. It'll be available for sale soon. And yeah, I think that is just a little preview of my work. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's amazing work. And we have a lot of themes in common. So I appreciate you. That's Thank you, A.V. Yeah, I always I'm a huge fan of your work. I own a lot of your comics and zines and yeah, zombies and horror. I'm 100 percent there. Nice. Thank you so much. And so we're going to move on to um, <clears throat> uh, the next guest of honor, which is Tamiko Sidore. Um, again, forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Uh, Tamiko Sidore, she, her, is a Hapa artist from Los Angeles working in the mediums of printmaking, painting, and digital art. Uh, her mother is a Japanese immigrant, and her father is a third-generation Italian-American. Most of her work is based on her personal experience as a multi-ethnic person exploring her many identities. She makes art to study her subconscious, express her feelings, and discover truths. She hopes that an artwork speaks to folks that have been margin marginalized and othered. She makes her work at Max's Garage Press alongside incredibly talented artists that she's proud to call her print community. She graduated from University of California at Berkeley with a BFA in fine art and currently resides in Berkeley, California. So thank you so much, Tamiko. Are you ready to go? Woohoo, yes I am. Sweet. Thanks for uh, being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Um, I would love to do a little screen share action. Great. I'm going to do that right now. Um, cool. All right. So I'm so excited to be here. Um, I've been printing at Max's Garage Press um, since 2014. And I'm just really grateful to have this space and to have met so many folks through um, this community, this beautiful community that Max and Sana has created. And um, yeah, Max has personally taught me so many printmaking methods, um, including like Riso, Litho, 
cyanotype. Um, he's just been so generous. He's even like given me lots of Photoshop tips, which I really appreciate. And Sana has um, been in a few of my exhibitions that I've curated, which I'm so grateful for. And she's also included in my Not Stoked zine that, oh yeah, here we go, that um, I'm gonna showcase later. So yeah, just like big shout out to you too. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so let's go to the next slide. Um, so yeah, I've been doing art my whole life. Um, I remember like really being into manga when I was younger and that's what originally inspired me to start drawing. And, um, you know, like took like AP studio art class in high school and, you know, realized that I really do want to do this for a career. And um, at UC Berkeley, I, uh, my major was in art practice. And so, um, sorry about this. Um, so, yes, my major was in art practice. And um, yeah, and I focused on printmaking in 2013. Um, I took this awesome intaglio class and um, there I was making zinc etchings. And uh, these are a couple pieces that I've made um, uh, during the class. And um, I just really, yeah, I really resonated with this medium. I love the technical aspects. Um, I enjoyed the limitations with color so that I can focus on like the imagery and the subject matter. And um, yeah, I just like, I felt like printmaking was my thing since 2013. And here's another print I made, it's called Bathland Bayou. And um, yeah, so, you know, after graduating, I wanted to continue my printmaking practice. And so my teacher connected me to Max's Garage Press and there I started, you know, um, doing other mediums as well other mediums of, print, of printmaking. Um, right here, I have a couple risograph prints. And um, the this one over here, um, it's called If the Fishbowl Fits. That was like my very first riso print and I had so much fun. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of like themes of um, women and mystical settings in my artwork. And um, yeah, and um, also my work is very personal. Um, I write or I, I um, make art about my personal experiences as a Hapa person. And um, just like there's a lot of themes of like identity and like desire to fit in. And, um, you know, my whole life, I felt like I've like chameleoned my way into so social situations. And I'm sure a lot of folks relate who are like, you know, uh, mixed race or, um, you know, children of immigrants, or if you are immigrants. Um, yeah. And so, you know, my artwork is just an exploration of my subconscious. And it's like a great navigating tool for me to, yeah, emotionally express myself. Um, so, so yeah, these are my risograph prints. It's been a lot of fun to delve into um, just the colors that you can use with Riso. Um, yeah, it's been very indulgent. Um, these are some intaglio prints I've made. Um, yeah, so these are all zinc etchings. And um, yeah, I've used um, hard ground and aqua tint. I know that these are like technical terms. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is probably my favorite print making medium. Um, so on the very left here, I have a piece called Ornament. Um, it's a woman with a house burning on her head and she's got like a front lawn dress with a, um, with a flamingo ornament. And this um, piece to me is um, inspired by um, my childhood of growing up in the suburbs and feeling like there's like this erasure of like my Japanese identity from like living in this like you know, um, comfortable, like mostly white um, neighborhood. And um, this piece in the middle here is called February's Fortress. Um, this is during the time when I was feeling very, very lonely. <laughs> and um, it was very rainy and gloomy in Berkeley. And I was just feeling very like, like I wanted to protect myself. 
And um, yeah, so hence this woman in like a castle dress and like a chastity belt. Um, and then on the very end here, um, it's called Rovine d'Amore. Um, it's, it's inspired by a trip to Rome that I went to with my mom. And it was after a breakup. And, you know, I just kind of felt like, you know, like I really resonated with the ruins that were in Rome. Um, going to the next slide. I think it's lagging. Here we go. So, yeah, I've also done some relief prints. Um, these two right here are um, lino cuts. And um, this piece in particular, it was a lot of fun. I um, was able to cut up each piece and ink them separately and put them together like a puzzle and then and then um, rub the paper on it. So that's how I got all the different colors. And then this piece in the middle juiced. Um, it is a also a lino cut. And I was able to get this like grading effect by first painting this part um, pink and then the bottom part yellow. And then where it merged, it naturally turned into an orange. So um, this was like a very fun piece to make. And then on the end here is baggage claim. Um, this one is a woodblock print that I made. And I've also done some screen printing. Um, I have some screen printed shirts that I've made. I have a small run of these. And I also uh, have made these not stoked bandanas. Um, I have sold out on them and I do want to make another run of those as well. Um, but yeah, screen printing, it is a lot of work and it's definitely a medium that um, I don't go to very often, but um, definitely enjoyable. And then finally, cyanotypes are my most recent, um, it's the most recent medium I've learned about and I've really been getting into it. And um, yeah, each of these images are hand um, drawn negatives on um, transparency paper. And um, yeah, on the left here, we got roaming instinct. Um, in the middle, this is called nesting heart. And it's an image of a heart with a little nest with eggs inside with these like Dolly esque like moths slash um, uh, butterflies flying around it. And then on the end here, it's called sanctuary. It's a hand reaching out to one of those um, weirdo moth creatures. And um, yeah, all of these are just like drawings from my sketchbook. Um, most of my inspiration is just like me doing stream of consciousness, writing or drawing in my sketchbook, and I'll take elements of that and then bring it to life in um, a print. Yeah, so um, that is a little sampling of all my work. Um, you can definitely see more on my website. Uh, tamikosadora.com. And um, you can also see my work in person. Um, I have an event coming up at West Coast Craft on September 18th and 19th. So I will be there with a bunch of um, a, a bunch of my prints. I also make stickers and pins and bandanas and earrings. So yeah, please come check out my stuff in person. Um, I also do have um, some items uh, stocked at this awesome shop called Bay Made in Oakland. And yeah, that's it for my presentation. And I'm going to um, do a little showing of a few of my favorite pages from this not stoked scene. So I'm going to stop screen sharing here. Um, amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Am I out of time? Just out of curiosity? You, you have two more minutes. Oh, OK, awesome. Great. Um, so let me take the background off. Great. Um, so I made this zine called Not Stoked, and we have here a flaming dumpster fire. And um, yeah, Not Stoked, it's just like, it can be like first world problems, it can be real, like intense problems. I just like wanted to make a zine that everybody can relate to and um, just kind of bring some lightheartedness to crappy situations in life. Um, this is a collaboration uh, between me and Sana Khan and Angelica Colliard and Lucy Stark and Kelly Monson and uh, Christina Hu. So it's six uh, women that I gathered and they each submitted a few pieces for this. Um, 
So let me show you this first page right here. It is of an empty fridge that Lucy Stark drew. Love that. And we also have, this is my favorite by Sana. It's a little comic that she made. It says, why do I even try to plant things? Um, and it's uh, someone, you know, like tending their garden. So glad I made myself uh, get some fresh air and sunshine, mixing the right ratio of sand and soil, making a cozy home for these succulent babies to thrive. And then on the bottom here, there's like a cat that's like pooping all over um, the succulent garden. And she wrote, and creating the ideal litter box for the neighborhood cats, apparently. So I thought that was freaking hilarious. Um, I This is my contribution here. It is a bike with stolen tires. Oh. <laughs> And um, Angelica drew this babe that stepped in some gum. <laughs> uh, this is like quite dark, but real. Um, yeah, Kelly drew COVID outside of her house. And I also wanted to show um, this drawing by Christina Hu. Um, it's a never ending to do list, shit to do. Um, some of those things include clean microwave, shower, do yoga to slow the decay of your fragile human body, um, read book you don't like to please friend who gifted it to you, answer one million emails. I mean, it's just so real. I love it. Um, I think that's everybody that I've gotten through. And where can they purchase that? Oh, yeah. So you can find this on my Etsy um, and you can the, there's an Etsy link through my Instagram handle. So, yeah, I got plenty awesome. of these in stock. Yeah. So that's my presentation. Thank you so much. Yay! Thank you Yay. so much, Tamiko. It's wonderful work. And I can't I look forward to grabbing some of that stuff myself. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Sure. Thank you. And so we are going to go ahead and continue with. Samantha Espinoza, and I'll read a little bit more about Samantha. Can everybody see my screen? Uh, Samantha Maria, Je oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Uh, Jatol Espinoza is a Chicanx artist coming from a Mexican and Salvadorian family. She grew up in LA and in, and in Denver, Colorado, and currently resides on Lizan Ohlone land in Oakland. She references living between worlds, identities, and homes as a marker of her queer Chicanx experience. Her work reveals her historical and personal traumas as opening for wider conversations on racialized, gendered, sexual, and capitalist oppressions. Her work is meant as a gift to fellow brown women. And um, I'm sorry, it, her work is meant as a gift to fellow brown women in the hopes that they will see parts of themselves reflected or whispered within her work. She is a youth educator, organizer, daughter, sister, and falls in love frequent, frequently. Thank you so much, Samantha. Samantha, are you available? You're on mute right now, Samantha, are you available? Hi, yes, I'm so sorry. I don't know where my internet just died on my computer. So no I'm on worries. my phone now. I can see your lovely face, so I know Thank you're you. there. Um, I'm assuming that you already went through my bio. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And please Thank pronounce you. your name. It's a lovely name and I know I chopped it up. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Samantha Maria Sochil Espinosa. Um, she, her pronouns. Uh, my internet is really bad right now at my studio. So I'm just going to show you guys a lot of the prints that I have and show some of my work um, in person and over Zoom. 
Um, if you want to look at anything online for accessibility reasons or just for general readability, please feel free to visit my website. It's um, samantamariaespinosa.com. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited and I feel really grateful to be able to present today. Um, and also feel free to cut me off at the 10 minute mark. I don't want to go over <laughs> my time. So just tell me when it's time to be done. Um, I really want to frame the context of uh, my work and kind of like the general things that I create and bring into this world um, through where I'm from and where I come from. Um, I am a second generation younger queer Mexicana and Salvadorena artist. Um, my, both of my parents are first generation. Uh, my mother was born and raised in LA and my father was born and raised in Denver, Colorado. Um, and I feel that both of these cities and both of the ways in which I grew up um, definitely affected the way I see the world and the lens in the which that I create. Um, on my mother's side, her family is from La Ciudad de Mexico and El Salvador. And on my father's side, um, my family is from Juarez. Uh, we have very intense histories um, on both sides of my family of migration and labor and um, through those experiences, I feel really blessed, especially as a second generation person, um, to have had such deep ties and relationships, um, specifically with the women in my family. Um, I've had the blessings to know not only my grandparents, but my great grandparents um, across all sets of my families. And because of those relationships and because of having that kind of close knit experience with the women who came before me and the women who created life for my parents and created subsequently my life. Um, I feel that my work is very much so intentional. Um, and I don't take the things that I do and work on very lightly. Um, I definitely feel that my parents and my grandparents and my great grandparents uh, labored and worked and toiled so that I could have the experience to dream and create, as well as a lot of my younger cousins. Um, so a lot of these creations come with kind of like a, like a heavy, a heavy sense of love and care and sacrifice. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I know that might be a little bit intense in terms of print work, but I feel like that's really, really important, especially um, being a woman of color. I exclusively create work for other women of color. Um, I really think that having my experiences and deriving my artwork from my experiences is very important um, for other women of color to see themselves reflected in it or um, for them to connect to it in some capacity. Um, I think there are very few experiences in my lifetime in which I can say that I was in a room full of artwork that was created by women of color, and it was very much so centered on our experiences and centered on our own perspectives. Um, and I feel uh, of a huge value in kind of continuing on that legacy of making artwork, specifically print work and printed material um, within that diaspora. So <laughs> um, I definitely had a lull in creations over the pandemic. Um, obviously, as many other folks have mentioned, the pandemic was extremely hard um, for so many reasons. And I honestly had no motivation and I was extremely depressed and not feeling myself throughout the pandemic. Um, and I expect nobody else to have felt good throughout any of that time. <laughs> um, so I think that we've all kind of experienced the shift. So um, the work that I'll be showing is pre-pandemic and also some things that I'm currently creating. Um, and I would also kind of like to talk about dreams where I would like to see my work go. Um, but a primary amount of my artwork is in printmaking. I do screen printing, um, relief prints, and um, more recently, um, risographs. Um, I was actually taught how to do uh, risograph work um, from Unity Press. And then I continued my work over at Max's Garage Press. Thank you guys so much for providing the space. Um, but I have an affinity for all printmaking. I think that, um, especially in a medium that is so white male dominated, specifically white cis male, um, or just white cis person dominated in so many ways, um, it's so important to have 
like the access to printmaking materials and printmaking resources, especially because like this is a way to get like word out. It's a way to get um, like multiples of our artwork out into the world. And that's so rare, I feel, to find. Um, so I'm just gonna show some artwork. <laughs> I really like to think about my artwork in kind of like a diary form. Um, I'm gonna read a little bit because I know you probably can't read it back backwards. <laughs> um, a lot of my work feels as if you're reading aspects of my diary because I want folks to feel that they can connect to it on an emotional, on an emotional level. Um, this print says, I ask myself for forgiveness and look at past selves for guidance as evidence to know I survived and wanting to hold those who did not, I remember. And I tend to create a lot of print work that involves altars and kind of the remembrance of folks who have passed, um, the commemoration of death, and oftentimes what does death mean? Um, but more recently, I've been thinking about what does death mean in the context of living under capitalism, racism, misogyny, um, and how so many folks in this world who experience a life that is uh, tainted by these experiences and systems are unable to experience a peaceful death or um, don't really know what it means to pass on peacefully. Uh, this print says, destroy and unlearn the systems and ideas that further oppress marginalized women fight alongside women who have been continually wronged under capitalism, colonialism, transphobia, and racism. And a lot of the imagery tends to go back as well to like family. Um, I have, again, like I said, like a really beautiful relationship with women in my family. And um, truthfully, without the women in my family, like my parents would not be here, I would not be here. and the way that in which that they had to live their life is subsequently what they had to sacrifice in order for myself and my cousins and their grandchildren to be able to experience the, uh, the privileges of dreaming and the privileges of being able to create and not necessarily feel that um, that comes with any constraints. This print says, um, to learn from the lives of women before me, to honor their strength and sacrifices and endless love. And this print specifically is of my abuelita and my bisabuela. Um, this is a picture actually that I based off of a picture that, she, um, that I took before my bisabuela passed away of my grandmother um, brushing my bisabuela's hair. Um, my bisabuela was very old when she passed, she was 98. And um, she couldn't brush her hair, like make herself look the way that she wanted to anymore. So my grandma would like spend the first hour of their day just brushing her hair and getting her ready. Um, and when I would go over to her house, I was like kind of part of this daily ritual of like my grandmother taking care of her mother and seeing myself in that context and being able to, you know, see the ways in which my great grandmother sacrificed so much to be able to provide this like beautiful space for me to witness that. So, um, <laughs> and I'm gonna show some new things that I'm working on. They're actually not print related. Um, they're, um, I've been working on ceramics and mirrors and stuff. Um, I actually started off as a painter before being a printmaker. And um, I stopped painting in college because um, I went to California College of the Arts and um, I was supposed to be in the paint, painting department, but I took one class and I hated it because <laughs> um, I had like a white male professor and he basically told me that like painting should be devoid of emotion. And I was like, I'm good. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so I started getting back into painting. I'm just going to bring some mirrors really quick. And then I know my time is almost up. But I just want to show you guys. So So even the mirrors that I've been making are very much um, kind of text-based. I like to tell a lot of stories in my work and to always include words and ideas and dreams. Um, and this mirror that I'm about to show, the rim of it says, I wonder if you hear me, my thoughts are of you. And I know you guys could probably see yourselves in the mirror. <laughs> 
but I've just been really enjoying creating these little creations that I feel like are unique to people. Um, this is a little palm mirror. <laughs> and I've been really enjoying kind of getting back into painting, but through the lens of printmaking, because um, I still feel like at the end of the day, I'm a printmaker and that's where my heart lies. But um, it's been really nice doing some painting while I have no access or had no access prior to Max's garage press reopening um, to a printmaking space. So that is my presentation. I don't want to take up too much time, but thank you. <laughs> you're, you're great on time. I did have one question and hopefully folks have uh, questions. I'll put them in the chat and Facebook and YouTube, as well as our side panel. Um, one question about your identity, how you identify as uh, Chikan X, and a lot of my artist friends who are older can consider themselves Chicano or Chicana, and what the difference is, it is the indigenous search for your connection to indigenous people where you add the X, or is Chicano or Chicana it's just a, a generational term? Uh, can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, I feel like generationally, and I feel like across many other folks that you might get different definitions from Chicana because I kind of do feel like it is an identity within like the Latinx diaspora that is so unique to us. Um, I identify as like Chicana because um, I was raised by somebody who's Chicana, who um, is Latin American, whose um, mother immigrated here while, you know, my mother was in her belly. And um, she was born and raised in LA and she had kind of like this cross-cultural experience of being a first generation person um, and being raised in between essentially two different worlds, two different countries, two different ideas. Um, and yeah, for me, Chicana specifically represents kind of the, the line between um, indigenous connection and um, also being heavily related to Lat like Latin America as a whole, but also still being raised in America. Um, this is a whole conglomeration. Right, because oftentimes when folks put the X there, connecting themselves to indigenous original people and especially their lineage back to Africa. So it was just interesting to me to really listen to that and hear that, um, especially when I've worked with and, and I hope you had a better experience at California of the Arts, which I had a wonderful experience. Um, you know, Yolanda Lopez, Malakias Montoya, these are instructors that really influenced me and I, I wish you had taken classes with them so that you had a more positive time. Um, but definitely Enrique Chigoya, these are people that if you had, didn't have a chance, maybe look up and maybe interview with them and, and let them speak You know, a little bit about their experience even at CCA. Um, but yeah, they definitely influenced me, C certainly printmaking. Uh, I know that uh, Malakias has a great practice that he was the one who taught me how to screen print. And then, um, yeah, it's just unfortunate that you would have an uh, instructor that would discourage you to that degree. I've had my own similar experiences um, who sort of want to police and, uh, you know, gatekeep what blackness was uh so it's interesting but i didn't i had more of i think i had a more wider variety of instructors um in the 90s which is when i was there um thank you so much for presenting um do we have more questions and again tell us where we can find your work oh um i sell my work primarily off of my instagram my instagram is um at i'm gonna spell it <coughs> at me. Um, X O C period H I T L. So it's uh, Sochi, but not everybody knows how to say it or pronounce it or spell it. So that's why I'm saying they can learn. <laughs> they can learn. It's good to, to learn just like I have to. So thank you guys so much. And I'm going to continue on uh, and share my screen with you all. And so. Um, again, if there aren't any questions, I want to talk a little about the rest of the upcoming events. Uh, Friday, September 3rd, they, there'll be an exhibitor show and tell, um, and that's group uh, F. And on Saturday, September 4th, exhibitor show and tell G, as well as in-person book binding workshop um, that you would have had to RSVP for. And then the guest of honor, 
uh, Tiny Splendor, their, their uh, specific Q&A with Anand at uh, 4 to 5. That's September 4th on Saturday. And then September uh, 5th on Sunday, uh, Show and Tell Group H and another bookbinding workshop. Uh, and then our closing party and hangout from 4 to 5. I uh, hope to see you at one of those events or all of them. And um, we just want to remind you we're collaborating with in-person uh, Bay Area Bookstore, Silver Sprocket, Mission, Comics and Art, Dog-Eared uh, uh, Bookstore, and the Castro. So if you want to pick up a book in person, you can visit one of those bookstores. Uh, and the comics and zines are on display right there in front of each space or somewhere specifically designated for comics and zines. And we do have a wonderful poster made by Tiny Splendor as well as t-shirts, uh, stickers to come. Thank you so much. And we uh, just want to remind folks to help support San Francisco Zine Fest. And you can find more information, excuse me, at sfzinefest.org. But remember we have a Patreon, we have a bonfire store, and you can also donate at sfzinefest.org slash donate. Um, oh, wait, um, <coughs> Avi, before we... Uh, hey, everyone, this is Anand, by the way. <laughs> before we head out, I realized we didn't have the time for a Q&A with our guest of honor and our invited guests. Yeah, um, I was going to wrap right back around with that. Oh, um, okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> sure, no problem. I just want to give the kudos and thanks so much to the interpreters, uh, Pro Bono ASL. Um, and then we are part of Intersection for the Arts. Uh, SF Zine Fest is a member of Intersection for the Arts. Um, and thank you so much, Intersection for the Arts is a bedrock Bay Area arts nonprofit that provides people working in arts and culture with fiscal sponsor fit, sponsorship and resources to grow. And like you said, um, and thank you so much for reminding me. Um, do we have questions coming from the chat or from Facebook? I mean, I definitely have questions, so <clears throat> give folks a chance to, to ask questions. Um, I did have a question for um, Max. Uh, his, are you available? Yep, yep, I'm here. So um, can you tell us a little bit how folks can connect with you um, and to be able to either produce work, publish work, or use your print services? Yeah, absolutely. Also, I just wanted to thank you for um, having us. It is a really true honor. And I wanted to say that just thank you to the presenters because you guys did an amazing job. Amazing. Thank and you. Yes. I know it's only you could keep going. You're all doing so much. And um, so I encourage everyone to just check them out. Look at their websites, Instagram, all that. Um, but as far as connecting with me and Sona, um, and Tiny Splendor and Max's Garage Press. We do, we are open to the community, even at this time. Um, <clears throat> we do have protocols in place for, you know, mask wearing and things like that, which we're not abiding right now, but normally we do. Um, but you can come and use our printing equipment. We have Riso printers that are open to the public. We also have uh, traditional printing equipment such as tools for doing lithography, etching, woodblock printing, screen printing, those sort of things. Um, if anyone is interested in joining, we have a membership option, which basically uh, costs us $60 for 30 days of access. Um, if you're interested in that, you can reach out by emailing uh, at maxsgaragepress at gmail.com or uh, info at tinysplendor.com. Um, they all kind of go to the same place. Um, yeah, I hope hey. that answers the question. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. And do uh, the panelists have questions for each other? Uh, someone wants to know if you guys have questions for each other. Uh, I, no, go for it. I was just going to say there's a question in the chat that I just added as like, why did you choose uh, these three artists for San Francisco Zine Fest? 
Um, well, we love all three of you. Thank you so much for doing such an amazing job presenting your work. I'm a super big fan of each of your guys' work um, individually. Like it really speaks to me um, and also just your practice. And our studio runs on having monitors volunteer their time and energy and presence to help run the press safely and just be friendly and be a source of information for the people that come here. And all three of you really embody that and make the space what it is and are just so active at what you do. And yeah, I think all of your work is so amazing and really appreciate you all. Yeah, also I would just say like, I think you're all particularly active and you're doing a lot. Like it's of, of so many people we interact with that are in our community, you're always productive and like uh, start trying to push yourself and really like bringing people into the fold and like uh, trying to be accessible through printing, through zine making and everything like that. So it just felt like it would be really nice to include you in this presentation. And we're just grateful that you are down to do it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Awesome. Any more questions? Thank you again. Thank you so much. We're so grateful you could join us. And uh, that's about our time. If no one else has any more questions, um, definitely going to visit your shops and definitely keep following you and learn more about you guys. Uh, this has been awesome. This is exciting uh, and amazing work. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. It's a great honor, truly. We'll truly see you is. on uh, Saturday.